Okay, Proverbs 6 and verse 31. This will be the last verse for tonight. But if he be found, speaking of the thief that stole to satisfy his soul when he was hungry, but if he be found, he shall re- restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. This is kind of interesting. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. So whereas the, the, the thief that... Uh, stole to alleviate his hunger. Men don't despise him. If he's caught, he's nevertheless going to be punished. He's not going to get off scot-free. As a matter of fact, he's going to be punished pretty severely, as we're going to see here. Verse 30, uh, which we just we already looked at. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry, but if he be found, he shall re- restore sevenfold. Now, a lot of people probably have the, the idea, and maybe it's just because of compassion, they feel bad for the guy, that if somebody's poor, they should be let off the hook. If you commit a crime when you're poor, then, you know, I mean, the guy's poor. What are you going to do, right? You shouldn't, we probably shouldn't, shouldn't kick somebody when they're down, right? You should just, just take it easy on him because he's poor. But, you know, the Bible does not teach that. Leviticus 19 and verse 15. Leviticus 19 and verse 15 tells us that we're not to show favoritism to rich or poor. Leviticus 19.15 says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So it doesn't matter if the guy is a homeless bum that you know walked into some store and shoplifted something to feed himself when he's hungry, or if he's Mark Zuckerberg and it's some kind of a white-collar crime, it doesn't matter. Um, if, if the law has been broken and it's been a legitimate law, then the person ought to be punished for it regardless of his status. So this man here that stole to satisfy his soul when he was hungry, he's going to restore sevenfold. In other words, seven times what he stole. That's a pretty, pretty lofty punishment there if you really think about it. If you stole a car, right? I mean, this is not, in context, not what the guy is stealing, but if you stole a car, you're going to repay seven cars, right? That, that's a, that take you a while to pay off. So, Pastor Wagner, what happened to those people who robbed, um, what do you call them, broke in stores, got TVs, and so on? Oh, they were uh, absolved, of course, because they were peaceful yeah. protesters. Oh. No, because they were, they were doing a righteous cause, so... Whenever you're protesting a guy that died of a drug overdose uh, that happened to have a police officer kneeling on him at the same time, it's okay to burn down stores and loot people's stuff that had nothing to do with it. So, yeah. Or when your team loses. <laughs> right. You can. I know, it's outrageous. Things. Outrageous. Now, the law of Moses required thieves to make restitution. And this is good law here. These, some of these laws back there in the Old Testament, the, one that had, the ones that had to do with the civil code, um, these would be great laws to build a society off of. We should have restitution in this country. Um, when you steal something, rather than going to jail and being a burden on society, you should make restitution. You should have to work for the guy you stole from, or you should have to go and work somewhere else and pay him back and more back than what you stole. This idea of going to jail, um, not only is it a burden on society, it just ruins this guy's life too. Yeah, he screwed up and stole. He needs to pay that back. But throw him in jail for a year and he can't work. He can't provide for his family. His kids don't have a father, right? It doesn't make any sense. There there weren't jails in the Bible. You know that. Like under God's law and the law of Moses, there were not jails. You either got fined, you got beaten, or you got executed. That was it. No jails. Um, you read about them keeping a man in ward for a day whenever he was found picking up sticks on the Sabbath just to find out what the Lord's judgment was going to be on the guy. Um, but you didn't, the people weren't rotting in jails in Israel, beaten, fined, or executed. And I am a firm believer in that. Empty the jails out. I kind of laws you don't need a jail because there's not as many criminals. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. And I'll bet you, and I, and I know this is the case, when Kent Hoven went to jail, he was a creation scientist. Um, he went to jail here it was 15 years ago, probably. He was in jail for, I think, over 10. He just got out here a few years ago. But 
he talked to people in jail and he said, if you had the choice, if they just beat the tar out of you or else keep you in prison for years, which would you take? And they're, oh, I'd take the beating any day, right? Because they don't, you know, you're just wasting your life rotting away in prison and, and it's just ruining your life and a bunch of other people's lives. So anyway, that's not really what I'm talking about, but I, I do like to make that point whenever I have opportunity. But anyway, so in the Law of Moses, there was this law of restitution, I talked about this in the study that Austin asked about years ago on uh, lawsuits, whether it's right for a Christian to sue or not. And essentially, this is what suing is about, making restitution, making it right. So if somebody steals from you or somebody injures you or somebody does harm to your property, you have the right to take them to court to sue, to get back what they took and to get back even extra if it caused other damage in the process. Uh, Exodus chapter 22 and verse 1. It says, If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Oxen were more valuable than sheep, obviously. Oxen you can plow with. You can also eat. They're bigger. There's there's just a lot more. uh, They're a lot lot more value than sheep are, so the, the penalty was a bit higher. You had to restore fivefold for oxen and fourfold for sheep. Now, if the possession was still alive, then you only had to restore double. So if you stole the oxen or the sheep and then you killed them or sold them and where you couldn't return them, then that was, that was worse. So you're going to pay either five times or four times. But if you stole the oxen or the sheep and you still had them and you could give them back, now you're only going to have to give back double. Verse uh, 4, Exodus 22, 4. It says, If the theft be certainly found... In his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Now you might think, okay, but why sevenfold? It says if the thief be found, he shall restore sevenfold. And that wasn't really a a law in the law of Moses. You don't have a law of restitution for sevenfold. But remember what, what the Proverbs are. The Proverbs are short, pithy sayings that are generally recognized as true. So what Solomon is saying here is apparently probably the custom was if you steal to satisfy your soul when you're hungry, like you broke into somebody's house, you're going to restore sevenfold. And it kind of makes sense that you'd have greater restitution if you broke into somebody's house to steal food. Because more than likely, if you're stealing food, you're not going to be plucking apples off the tree out in the yard. In fact, in Israel, you were allowed to do that. If you were walking through the field, you were allowed to pluck ears of corn. You were allowed to take a fruit off of somebody's tree. You couldn't walk up there with you know three bushels and just start plucking them all. But if you were hungry just walking through and you grabbed something, it was no problem. That was, that was allowed in the law of Moses. Jesus and his disciples did that. They walked through the, the field and they plucked off ears and they were, they were eating them because they were hungry. They did it on the Sabbath and the Pharisees had an issue with that. But the issue was not them plucking the ears of corn in somebody else's field. It was doing it on the Sabbath and there was nothing wrong with doing it on the Sabbath either. The Pharisees were straining in a gnat, making a mountain out of a molehill. But anyway... The point is, if you stole oxen or sheep, you probably did it in the field or at best maybe in the barnyard or maybe even in the barn or something. And yeah, that that's irritating and and that's that's wrong and you're going to pay for that. But if you steal food to satisfy your soul, chances are it's in somebody's house. And you actually had to break into somebody's house, risking maybe they're there. Maybe they try to defend themselves. Maybe you end up killing them because they tried to kill you because you broke into their house. Who knows what? I mean, it's a, it's a lot more grievous offense to break into somebody's house. Damage to the house. Damage to the house. And that makes sense why then you would restore sevenfold as opposed to only four or fivefold if you stole something out of the field. That's what makes sense to me anyway. And it is interesting. There was a precedent in the law of Moses uh, for punishing people sevenfold for their sins. The Lord said that he would do that to Israel. Uh, when they sinned, he would chastise them seven times for it. Leviticus 26 and verse 18. He says this several times, but I'll just get this one verse. And if ye will not let, or if ye will not yet, for all this, hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So the Lord was giving them sevenfold there for their sins, and that was also the punishment that Solomon said would happen. And then it says, 
he shall restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of his house. And you think, well, wait a minute, how does that square? What if he broke into, into somebody's house and he stole three loaves of bread and now he has to give all of his possessions in his house, all the substance of his house? That's more than sevenfold, right? He could have a, you know, a bunch of wealth. Well, depending on the nature and circumstances of his theft, a thief might have had to give everything he owned to make restitution for his crime. It could have been, maybe if it was a, a more grievous offense and he did property damage or he scared somebody really badly when he broke into their house or harmed somebody who was in there or whatever, you could see him giving all the substance of his house. Or it could simply be that if you're hungry enough to steal to satisfy your soul, chances are you don't have anything in your house, right? You probably you have a chair to sit on if you're lucky or something, right? You probably have nothing in your house, so it would take all the substance of your house to make up sevenfold for the food that you stole, and that's probably a more likely explanation. So it doesn't pay to steal even when you're poor because you're going to be poorer if you get caught, if you lived under a biblical law anyway.